Fly out there, Miles holders. Okay, so that was that, that was that. Okay, now I am ready to welcome Odslan fellow Casey Selden to talk about, I don't actually even know, is it Tarar, Tarare? I'm not totally sure she will tell us. A man with an incredible appetite. Please welcome Casey to the stage. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and gentle persons of every stripe. I am so pleased to be here because I'm going to tell you about a person whose name I don't know how to pronounce. So we're going to call him Tarare for the evening. And I just want to start with the basics and tell you what we know about this man is that he could eat. We know of his life starting at age 17 when he was a mere 100 pounds, but we also know that he could eat 100 pounds a day. His weight in food, that is one quarter of a cow on a daily basis, and his family, who were peasants living in pre-revolutionary war France, could not keep up with Terrare. So at 17, they sent him on his way with the instructions to make his own way in the world, and like many teenagers, he found his way in with a rough crowd who taught him how to rob and steal his way to three squares a day. But it wasn't very long before he caught the attention of a sideshow who invited him on as a performer. And basically what he would do is invite the audience to fill his belly. That was his show. And people found it fascinating. <laughs> he was basically the human version of the very hungry caterpillar. And he was open to whatever people would bring. Usually things would start with items that we would all agree are edible, like bushels of apples at a time, dozens of eggs. They probably didn't come in containers like this. And what we do know from the records is that he could keep a dozen eggs or a dozen apples in his cheek at one time. I'm going to attempt to keep one egg in my mouth at one time. <laughs> this is how a regular human would try to overcome this feat. <laughs> That's plenty. A dozen is quite a bit more. Now, things would usually move on from there, and he would take whatever people would offer. So, wine corks, because it's France. Usually someone would come up with a rock and Terrari would just swallow it whole. And then we would get to the finale of the performance where somebody would bring out a live animal. Which Terrari, with his fascinatingly strong jaws, would uh, rip open their torso. He would drink their blood like a vampire. He would swallow this creature down, leaving only the bones. And about an hour later, he would cough up the fur and skin like some sort of demented owl. And that was a show! <laughs> this, might seem, this might seem a little tame in comparison. But I do want to recognize the fact that this all comes to us from hearsay, so it may have been exaggerated. But then our man Terrare signs up for the French army, and they kept exacting records, so none of the rest of this requires any grain of salt. P food pun intended. <laughs> now, initially, Terrare, he only received regular rations, just like any other recruit, but that landed him in the hospital complaining of symptoms of malnutrition and starvation. And so he caught the attention of some of the army doctors who immediately put him on quadruple rations and started to pay attention to his unique abilities. <laughs> While there, Terrari ate, ate a meal intended for 15 German laborers. They laid out a table and Terrari came through and wiped it all out. There were two enormous meat pies. There were four gallons of milk. And after this meal, he went down to the kitchen and asked for any scraps he could find, like potato, fields, cause, p potato peels, because he wasn't quite full yet. While uh, the doctors were watching, he also continued to eat things that most people would not like puppies. What else do we have here? Snakes were one of his favorite things. 
He once ate a live eel, and I just, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge how many tiny hairpin bones would be in one of these creatures that did not bother to rare a bit. Cute little lizards down his gullet for science. Hunger. Also hunger, yes. So this all was fascinating to the people who are witnessing it, but at this point I just want to take a moment to think about this guy's experience as a human, to build some empathy for him, because it would have been a delightful afternoon if you were in the audience of one of these shows and had a steely disposition, but uh, his life did not come with an uplifting moral like that of the very hungry caterpillar. This wasn't all building to some delightful transformation. His whole life was never free of the tedium of searching for that next meal. And... Um, we can really get into the science of this because it has been studied. Many of you in the audience probably are familiar with Abraham Maslow's work of trying to look at how we as humans have needs that start with the physiological. If we can't transcend those and get the food and water and shelter that we need, we can't ever feel safe. If we don't feel safe, we can't ever ever feel the love and belonging of a community. If we don't have that in our lives, we can't really appreciate our self and our self-esteem. Self-actualization comes when everything else is there, and Terare, since he was never full, never paid, made it past that first level. He didn't ever get the chance to build his social and emotional growth. So we are focused on Terare the human, let's talk a little bit about his appearance. According to all the records, he looked like a pretty normal, skinny dude. He never made it much past that 100 pound 17 year old. And we know he had kind of a stretched mouth because he could fit a dozen eggs inside of it. And we know he had bad teeth, but that was Europe at the time. <laughs> but. We can't stop with his appearance because if you were anywhere close to this man, you would have smelled him. He was said to have sweat constantly and especially right after he'd eat and had these visible stink lines emanating off of him like pig pen. He constantly emitted a powerful odor and according to the records in the London Medical and Physical Journal, he often stank to such a degree that he could not be endured within the distance of 20 paces. In fact, it's really quite unclear whether Terare was his actual name or nickname because there was a popular kids tune that would be sung in the era in reference to powerful explosions. And it may have been ascribed to Terare because of his <coughs> prodigious flatulence. <laughs> Terare, our hero. <laughs> What's more, if he was hungry, you wouldn't hesitate to steal your lunch money or maybe your lunch or your pocket watch or your rocks or really anything that wasn't nailed down to appease his ravaging uh, appetite. And when he did have something to eat, his body would expand like a balloon. And then he would get really sleepy while he digested and he would return to his original size. So if you happen to see him without his clothes, he would have this really stretched skin around his waist that he could wrap all the way around until it touched the other side. In other words, he was a really tough dude to be around. But despite all of his otherworldly behavior, his doctors affirmed that there was nothing wrong with his mind. He was sane, he was just hungry. And so he was declared fit for military service. <laughs> so this fellow is not Terare. This fellow is probably most well known for his uh, attachment to his lady love, Empress Josephine. This was her first husband. His name is General Alexandre de Béarnais, and his idea was to use Terare has, and his singular talents as a spy. So he instructed our man to swallow down a wooden box with a secret message contained inside, in which case it would not be discovered even if he was searched until he got to the other side of enemy lines. And then he was sent to Prussia. 
Now, as an aside, the war we're engaged in is the War of the First Coalition, which you may or may not be familiar with. This is the one where France took on the Holy Roman Empire, Austria, Britain, Spain, Portugal, and the Dutch Republic simultaneously and won. It was Napoleon showing the fuck off, and it lasted for five years. And one of the places they were fighting was this country called Prussia, which was German-speaking. And that was the problem for Armand Terrare, because he was not. What's more, he was also not entirely an inconspicuous human. <laughs> Remember his personal odor, the visible stink lines, the namesake farts, the quadruple rations? They would have had to set him up with an enormous wagon train of supplies, but they did not set him up for success at all. And so it should come as no surprise that he was almost immediately captured. And he was brought to Prussian jail where he was tortured, flogged, and discovered to have the secret message. He was then chained to a toilet until he evacuated said message, having carried it in his digestive tract for over 30 hours. And according to his own retelling, he then went and swallowed it again. <laughs> Thus, the process repeats until some sort of minor Prussian soldier was tasked with watching him and then... Once all was said and done, finding that wooden box in what was there and retrieving the secret message. Also torture, <laughs> to be sure. And what did this message say? I've given it a little bit of a modern paraphrase, but this is basically it. Yo, dude, we know you're in prison. We're sending you a guy. He's cool. Will you let us know if he safely gets to you? If so, we might use his skills as a spy again. Thanks, bro. Stay strong. In other words, Terrare was not traveling with a real spy message, and he had endured all of these hardships for nothing. The Prussians thought so little of him that they punished him with a mock execution. They set everything up and then sent him on his way back to France. They did not want to feed him. <laughs> and while this was definitely a low point in Terrare's life, this next chapter, it brings him even lower. So please steal yourself for some sads, because at this point, Terrare's lost his purpose. He's lost the respect of the French army. And he's back at the hospital where he spent so much time in previous chapters. But the events of this spy mission have left him understandably traumatized, so he's no longer chill with this place in life. And so he begs his doctors to cure him. And they take on this task, but it is 1700s France, and we've already learned that their medical skills are not really up to everything that is required. So their first step is to put him on a very strict diet, at least for Terrare standards, and then they give him basically every medicine that they've come up with at the time, which includes sour wine, opium, tobacco pills, as well as large quantities of soft-boiled eggs. None of it worked. But it did have an effect on Terrare because this limited diet left him starving. And so he's looking for anything that will fulfill his appetite. He is caught swallowing the bandages and other medical equipment at the hospital. He begins to go to the wards where doctors are bloodletting their patients and he'll drink that blood down like a vampire. Nutrients. Furthermore, he's caught several times lingering around the morgue, leading to rumors of endocannibalism, which is the fancy term for eating dead people. And when a 14-month-old baby disappears from the hospital, under mysterious circumstances, Terrare is told with no uncertain terms that he's believed to be responsible and is told to hit the road. And here's where we lose Terrare for a few years. We don't really know what happens in the next chapter, but in 1798, he turns up at a hospital in Versailles, so sick he can hardly stand, complaining of a golden fork eaten two years ago that was the beginning of all of his troubles. The doctors who'd been spending so much time with him hurry to find out what's going on with one of their star patients, and while it's true he probably wouldn't have, shouldn't have swallowed that fork, Doctors decide that Terrari was actually suffering from tuberculosis. And after a few weeks in hospital, it takes his life. 
Traore was done in by circumstances entirely unrelated to his eating or his spying, and he dies at the ripe old age of 26. I told you this part was sad. <laughs> But I don't want to leave you on this note, dear ones. Instead, I want to point out that up until this very last chapter in his life, Armand Terrare had people. Whether it was his poor family, or his ragtag bag of hooligans, his sideshow freak family, or his insatiably curious doctors, there were folks in his life who acted as his community. In other words, this smelly, weird, ever-hungry dude had people. And that makes all the difference in the world. Honestly, it makes all the difference in most of our lives, not just Terrare. So I would like to raise a glass to that note, to community, the power it has to keep people sane and supported and non-cannibalistic, most importantly.